Hey guys, we are back with the team from Days Gone. We got John, Jeff, and Chris here, uh, and Sid, of course. We're going to be rocking a little bit of the Days Gone gameplay demo. How are you guys doing? Great. 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 We're so excited to have you back. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Sid, are you ready to dive into this? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, here we go. We're watching some live gameplay here of Days Gone. I have picked up the controller. I'm looking through the binoculars, and I see trouble. I see yeah, trouble. Lots of trouble. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're looking at about 250 individual horde units right here. This oh, is wow. smaller than the horde we showed at the sawmill a few years ago, but I feel it's a good starter horde for you. And it's really important now. Prepare. So. All right. You just took a bunch of ammo from your saddlebags. So, oh, saddlebags. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and this, that's an important upgrade for the bike to prepare you for encounters such as this. All right. When you, when you don't try to kill them with the bike. But since it's a sandbox, I say you go for it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, oh, there off to a bad start. <laughs> oh. oh, really bad start. Nice job. I mean, this is yeah. the world's best demo I could have done that, dude. Thanks, <laughs> Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is not uh, <laughs> Oh, man. This is not going to go well. We're going for realism. Okay, so I need there's separate inversion for on foot and vehicle. I noticed. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So let's do that. <laughs> We're playing it live here. Is that a separate? Uh, feature? Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, so press R2 to go to the bike. Ah, uh, display. Oh, sorry. There we go. There you All right, there we go. There go. Now we're good. Now everything's going to go it, flawless. It was the old yeah. inverted controls. Excuse That's right. Good. I'm a freak. <laughs> That's right. It is the right way to play. <laughs> Here we go. Easy now. Oh, mama. This is a more powerful bike than what I drove in the last build. Yes, this is an upgraded bike. Yeah. This looks gorgeous. So the uh, horde is back behind you, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> Easy now. This game looks incredible. No strategy in this game is a bad strategy, but I'm going to say this is a terrible strategy. <laughs> the worst strategy. Yeah. So tell me, what, what, do I, uh, what do I have in terms of weaponry here? OK, well, so you, if you get off your bike, you can access your survival wheel. And um, on this, you're going to have your, your, you know, your weapons on the, in the cardinal directions. But then in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to have throwable explosives. In the upper left, you're going to have your consumables, which include things like your health, your bandages, uh, but most importantly, kind of survival buffs. Things that will help enhance uh. your, your core attributes. And you know, crafting one is going to take away from another, of course. So you've got to make choices that suit your play style. Um, and then also we have distractions on the bottom left corner. Not really the best for the horde, but on the bottom right we have traps. So in this case, I think you might have uh, proximity bombs or, or airbag remote detonators. I think, they're, I think I, in this I case you have some it. the prox, uh, proximity mines. And if you plan properly and look through the environment, you find like key places that you say, I'm gonna, I want to run the horde through here later and trigger this detonation when enough of them run past it. So you can, smart players will do that. Foolish players will just charge in, guns a-blazing, and it's going to be a lot harder for those guys. What, what kind Most of player will players will be? will try to jam their bike into the horde. They can try that. <laughs> so what's your strategy here, Sid? What are, what are you thinking? How do I, how do I Stalling is yeah, a strategy. You've got it selected either. right there, and then <laughs> uh, hit R2 to... Okay. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh Sid. You can't melee the horde. You can try. The strategy is panic oh. and run. <laughs> okay, we're on the move now. Lost my bike. Not good. You can still save it. I, I don't recommend a melee bat against these guys, but <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> Got to stay nimble here. This is going to be uh, 10 minutes of me running from these guys, isn't it? <laughs> well, Sid's trying to make his way around. How do you guys They're plan for to. all they'll, of these different topics that people are going to dive into? How do you think ahead of time of people are going to want to go about this a million different ways? So what's the process oh, of building man. out all of that? Well, we think about what makes kind of sense and what sounds cool that fits the IP, but we, we do have to provide a lot of different tools just so they can have that, right. that you know, the, the, the flexibility. And then we just try to keep things very loose. So that we're going to be surprised by a lot of the videos we see yeah. online of people playing this. We'll be like, wow, I didn't think that would happen. And when we've done that internally, we've been surprised about how things just kind of work. So, yeah. so we're supporting it by it's just. It's always the best part of games like this is just seeing how people get so creative. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We had, a, we had a company meeting last week where our head of QA literally took on the horde using his crossbow 
and custom crafted explosive oh bolts. Oh my gosh. And it was pretty amazing. So he pretty much got all the way there. I think he had to use one Molotov, but Jeff and I had never seen that happen before. So we were yeah. surprised and we were like, oh. Well, and what's cool about it, and I think this goes to your question is, um, we, it makes perfect sense that it worked because the way we built the systems, right. but it's, it, emergence is about a bunch of fully oh. predictable, unpredictable <laughs> things, and it just works. Like, we're catching yourself catching on yourself fire. Catching yourself on fire is possibly a good <laughs> yeah. strategy. That's, the, I, I, that's so he can set them on fire when they grab him. That's, yeah, yeah. that was the plan. Okay. This is so one of the things we're going to well. point out, though, is that the, the horde locations are all story driven. Uh -huh. And so this is a mass grave site. So Nero would have come in as the world was ending, dug these mass graves, and they happened to have giant barrels of fuel that they would have used to burn the corpses of all the people who had died during the pandemic. So there's a yeah. reason why you find all these explodables out in these areas. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> there you go. One of the key strategies is to go and find those first and then plan as you're running around to try to drag oh, the whole thing out of Anima. There you go. And in these encounters, oh, you've really oh. got to be thinking on your feet as you're running forward. For me to pieces. Oh. I'm, dying. I'm doing better, though. I'm getting a hang of this yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. That's now I got it all good. figured out. But you want to scan the environment constantly, looking for new opportunities. Yeah. And it, a lot of them reveal themselves, but you've, you've got to be nimble. You've got to be moving. You've got to be thinking and using the survival will and just using every mechanical aspect at once to survive. And these are late game encounters. Okay. So you run into the horde throughout the game. Early on, you can't take them on. You're not strong enough. You're not fast enough. You, you don't have large enough magazines in your weapons. So you really learn you early on. You have to work on, your way up. Yeah, the, uh, how you're going to them. The, by the time the, you get to uh, this mission, you would, have, you would have learned some of the strategy. Um, and, and you'll notice those logs right there. Mm -hmm. If you blow those open, they'll actually. One of the things uh, I think is great about this, okay. too, is that Release you also you have the cultists that are out there. So actually, you have go to your uh, that are out lower right-hand corner, like 4 o'clock on your survival wheel. You have to be worried about. And so this so could bring up possibly the be a situation one. that you would maybe go to the, use them to your you know, advantage if there were other enemies around. Place that thing on the barrel. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, you have one equipped, so hold L2. This is one of the late-game missions. There you go. And there are open-world encounters And then when you trigger them, make sure they run past here. You have to go take on. If you see a horde nearby, you can be a Pied Piper. You can actually get on your bike, ride through the horde drag them up into the ambush camp, All right, and then watch on. the mayhem that ensues. Oh my gosh. All right, here they come, Sid. Oh. Nice one. Nice. We got about a quarter of them. Front row. Front row. Oh, you're going to have to reload Crazy. pretty soon, dude. Get, oh, run. Uh, get out! Run. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you. It worked for a while. <laughs> it did. It, I mean, we're making progress. Yes. We're chipping away here. <laughs> This is this is unlike anything I've ever played. I've never fought so many enemies at once. I mean, it's uh, it's really really interesting. Let's see here. I was digging these Molotovs. So one of the other things we wanted to point out is that we've been working really hard on performance. So if you saw the demo that we we released some footage last month, that was kind of alpha footage, and you know this kind of polish really comes very say, very late in the game. So, so the, this is like almost final lighting for the environment. The, Environment and tech guys have been working really hard on that, but also performance is key for this game. All right. All right, it's on. Oh. 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 <laughs> there we oh, go. Oh, there it Nicely is. Nicely done. <laughs> They're starting to fan out. Whoa. Yeah, as you can see, they're starting to avoid the fire as well, so. Anything that's red is explodable as well. Keep moving, Sid. Short controlled bursts. Boom. Yeah, always oh, time to run. Oh, time to run. Red eye. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. And, and, uh, and that's awesome. how we show it's alive. Yeah. <laughs> Sid, this was it. I blame him. I did too good. Yeah. That was the problem. <laughs> All right, so you can see we still have some optimization. Yeah, we're not coming yeah. out to February, so. We still have some work to go. <laughs> you guys are coming out February 22nd, though. I'm sure you can polish that right up. This is it's a live fun. environment, though. I mean, that's, these things happen early in development. But uh, yeah, that was super cool. I have never played anything like that. It was really, really unique. And I mean, we're just obviously kind of goofing around here, you know, playing with uh, the, the huge, huge, huge hordes. 
But, um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do in this game, and there's a lot of uh, emergent systems that come about, and you saw some of it here. I mean, every single time I tried that on, it was a completely different experience. Yes, exactly. And I know that's something that you guys are really focused on. I mean, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, the, uh, the Criers, the, uh, the Freaker Ravens that, that, that may choose to attack at one point or another. I mean, talk a little bit about how those systems sort of, uh, you know, combine with each other. The, the Horde is just one part of the game, you know. Yeah. It's, it's uh, several... We, you know, it's an ecosystem of creatures that are all trying to survive and uh, using any tactics, you know, necessary, as are you. So humans are just as dangerous as the horde, just in different ways. The right. criers are, are, are dangerous in their own ways. And really, from a design point of view, we found just let these systems, set up these systems so they interact and the possibilities are endless. And the game just kind of makes it, I'm going to say it makes itself. <laughs> a lot of work went into setting it up to this point, but it, it allows you to be the author of your experience. And... Um, it's just, it's a really rich experience that is fun for us to watch. And um, I think that's what people want. It, you know, in a game where it's about freedom it, with the character, and it's also about freedom and gameplay decisions and choices. And it just, it's, I feel it's the only way to make a, a modern game at this point. I mean, it's just, it's truly an emergent game, and there's just so many factors that can uh, coalesce around it. So uh, I have a, a real hunch that this one's going to be big among the streaming community. I mean, I think oh, just, yeah. Yeah. you never know what you're going to get, you know? And even in our uh, seven, eight minutes of, of play here, uh, where I botched it horribly and then slowly figured out what to do, um, it was just totally different every time. So depending on what weapons, what tactics, what approach, Exactly. Bike, not bike, use traps, you know, full offense. Do you guys have a couple favorite ways that you would have tackled that? So what I would have done your is... Your go-to strategy. Uh, <laughs> you know, what I, what I like to do is, uh, you know, I'll, sometimes I'll go through and place the bombs and stuff. I like to kind of get right into the action. And uh, I, I like to level up on my stamina and my focus. In, in this situation, I think it's actually a little bit more important than health. You can, if you pull it off properly, you can go unscathed if you can stay ahead of them. And you can use focus mode to go in and selectively target them. But it's just really cool to run through and you feel like, you know, Jason Bourne, kind of, hey, I can do this, I can do that, I can shoot this thing, if I vault through that, I'll go over there, get some ammo, do this, uh, and then I'll run back by my bike and then I'll top off the ammo and then I'll go back and I'll, dr I'll draw them around this way. It's just, it feels like you're in the decathlon. I should have jumped on the bike, I should have, when I got him pissed off, I should have run around, jumped on the bike and gotten out yes, of there. Yes, I've done that as well. Yeah. So really that's that's a better that player bike. than me, so I use the bombardment strategy, which is where I have, I stock up on all the attractor grenades that I can carry, all the napalm molotovs, <laughs> all the pipe bombs, and I'll just lob those into the pit and then just keep lobbing until I run out. And that'll take out three quarters of the horde. How many uh, freakers do you think we were seeing there? 250. Woo! It's yeah. one of the baby hordes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's one a baby of the smaller hordes. hordes that so like what, what I'm thrilled about this is that, you know, uh, two years ago when we revealed it, we had a, it was our 500 uh, unit horde. Um, that's the same horde you were fighting today. It was kind of our simplest system to put in the game, believe it or not, and it just, it just comes straight at you, yeah. and it'll go around and over and through things, but it's, it just, it's so simple and yet so robust, but it's real, and I'm glad that you got a chance to see now, it. Was, kind of prove it was like nothing I've ever played before, and I can't wait to get in there and really get familiar with the controls and with the inventory system. There's a lot to take in here. I love games with that kind of depth and the, those uh, tactical options, so thanks, guys, for swinging by. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for All having right. us. Thanks for having us. We have a lot more coming for you guys here live at E3. Stay tuned. PlayStation.